Detroit Lions have had some generational talents over the past decades. Barry Sanders, Calvin Johnson, and Matthew Stafford. Even with such great talent, the Lions have gotten so little out of it. In the 92 years that the Lions have been an NFL team, they've played over 1,200 games, but only 20 of those have taken place to the playoffs. The last 10 years have included just three instances where the Lions were in the playoffs and immediately outed in the wild card. You could say that it's better than not making it at all, but the question here is, when was the last time the NFL has seen the Detroit Lions team make a deep playoff run? Let's wind the clocks back to the 1990s, where the Lions were truly seen as one of the better teams in the league. Detroit this decade was able to make the playoffs six times, pretty good if you ask me, and it all started in the 1991 season, 30 years removed from today, which means that not even Tom Brady, as old as he is, was around yet. As a matter of fact, he was just 14 years old. This Detroit Lions team had just gone 6 and 10 the year before and was looking to make a jump under head coach Wayne Fontes in his third full season in the position. The first overall pick in the 1991 draft was defensive tackle Russell Maryland, taken by the Dallas Cowboys out of Miami. Detroit's first round pick would be wide receiver Herman Moore out of Virginia. The Lions offense was originally led by 25 year old quarterback. Rodney Pete, who was just in his third year in the NFL. He would go down with a season-ending injury where backup Eric Kramer came in to finish the season. Some believe that Kramer should have started from the beginning. Despite having the ninth-ranked offense in the league this season, what the Lions team was in desperate need of was a quarterback who could play at the Pro Bowl level. Imagine what Matthew Stafford could have done with Barry Sanders in his backfield. Speaking of Barry Sanders, he would of course be the team's leading rusher at age 23 with over 1,500 yards rushing and 16 touchdowns averaging 103 yards a game. With having two quarterbacks throughout the entire season, the leading receiver on this team was Brett Pyramid with 52 catches, 668 yards and only one touchdown. Robert Clark was second with 47 catches, 640 yards and six touchdowns and Willie Green led the team in receiving touchdowns with seven. While having a top 10 offense and an 11th ranked defense on the other side, this Detroit Lions team would finish 12 and four. While they were able to win the NFC Central Division in 1991, I think it's important to note that their schedule was not that difficult for them to go 12 and four with. As a matter of fact, this team only produced three wins in the regular season versus teams that had a record of above 500. And one of those wins were against a Bills team who were resting their starters in the last game of the season, and Detroit barely won that game 17-14 in overtime. You could say the games where they lost were what really exposed the Lions for who they are. Opening the season with a 45-0 loss to the 14-2 Washington Redskins, losing 35-3 to the 10-6 San Francisco 49ers, and later a 20-10 loss to the 11-5 Chicago Bears. Nevertheless, they were still good enough to make the playoffs, even if you think this team may have been a bit overrated, they were still able to produce six Pro Bowl players, including running back Barry Sanders, left tackle Lamas Brown, nose tackle Jerry Ball, linebacker Chris Spielman, safety Benny Blades, and kick returner Mel Gray, who, along with everyone else, was able to be an All-Pro. Around the NFL during this time, the MVP would be Thurman Thomas of the Buffalo Bills, with 1,400 yards rushing and seven touchdowns, along with 62 catches, 631 yards receiving and five touchdowns. Even though he won MVP, he didn't actually win the rushing title. That belonged to Emmitt Smith with almost 1,600 yards rushing and 12 touchdowns. Warren Moon was the passing leader with over 4,600 yards and only 23 touchdowns. He actually led the league in interceptions this year with 21. Michael Irvin, who was also on the Cowboys with Emmitt Smith, led the NFL in receiving with 93 catches, over 1,500 yards and eight touchdowns. The rookies of the year were Leonard Russell and Mike Crowell, while the defensive player of the year was Pat Swilling, who led the league with 17 sacks along with six forced fumbles. Because the Lions were 12 and four, they were able to get a bye week, so they would face the Dallas Cowboys once again in the divisional round. The first time these two teams met was in week nine of the regular season, where even though the Lions lost Rodney Pete for the rest of the season, they still humiliated the Cowboys 34 to 10. And in the playoffs, it would be no different. It was never a game, literally. Eric Kramer torched the Cowboys with 341 yards and three touchdowns with a rating of 129.4. 
Barry Sanders didn't even do much as he only had 12 rushes for 69 yards and one touchdown. Cowboys quarterback Troy Aikman played poor with only 114 yards and one interception, and he also leave the game where their backup Steve Burelin also threw an interception. Detroit will win 38-6 and move on to the NFC Championship to play the Washington Redskins. The Lions would start and end their season versus the same team with just about the same result. The Redskins having 45 on them in the first game and still put up 41 to win 41-10 in the NFC Championship game. Redskins quarterback Mark Rippon threw for 228 yards and two touchdowns, while the offense also had two rushing touchdowns as well. Lions' Eric Kramer threw for 249 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, while Barry Sanders only had 44 yards rushing. The Redskins team that the Lions had no chance of beating will go on to win the Super Bowl by beating the Buffalo Bills 37-24, where Mark Rippon would win Super Bowl MVP. When you take a look at the current Lions team, as well as Matthew Stafford. Stafford was only three years old in 1991. The oldest player on the Lions roster currently, Don Mulbach, was just 10 years old. Jamie Collins was two years old. Desmond Trufant was only one years old. Jared Goff, TJ Hawkinson, along with first round pick Pene Sewell, and pretty much just the rest of the 2021 draft class wasn't even born yet. By moving on from Matthew Stafford and acquiring Jared Goff, Along with having Dan Campbell now as head coach, the Lions are truly in a new era. Behind the Cincinnati Bengals, they have the second longest stint of going without a playoff win in the NFL. So let's see what happens. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, like and comment how you think the Lions will do in 2021, when you think they'll be able to win a playoff game, and if you knew any of the information I presented to you today. And if you like me, subscribe.